Hey guys, Ultra Maximus back with another Transformers review. This time we're taking a look at a Transformers Universe figure, and it's Dinobot Triceradon. And I love this mold. I always have. This has got to be one of the most repainted molds in Transformers history. Triceradon is, well, he's a Beast Wars 2 or Beast Wars Neo figure. Uh, that came out in the 90s, and they have repainted this guy at least five or six times, I think. I actually had this uh, in the Transformers Armada version that was kind of a light gray with the orange horns. I've never had the Universe version. Unfortunately, my Armada version uh, was lost in a move, so I found this guy on eBay for $5.00. And uh, it actually cost $6.80 to ship him. So the shipping actually cost more than to get the actual figure. So you can get this guy pretty cheap. Anywhere from 5 bucks. I've seen him up to $20, $25, $30 still in package. Uh, the figure was released in 2003. Um, again, just another uh, incarnation of the figure. I do like the paint job on this guy. We'll talk about it here in a second. Um, I did want to show that the seller did have the original instruction sheets, uh, or sheet, I guess. There's nothing on the back of it. It's just a little one sheet. This is a pretty simple transformer, uh, but it was kind of cool that he actually still had the instructions with it. Um, you know, that's pretty nice. Now, the funny thing is, this actually has a, a third mode to it. They call it trap mode, uh, where he can actually turn into a corpse, but that is not mentioned in the instructions at all in the U.S. version. Um, I don't know if the Japanese version does or not. I would presume so, uh, but yeah. Oh, look. It is sad, baby. Oh, sad, baby. You're always so sad. What is the lion? What does that mean? I know that. Don't give it to a little kid. What this? You know, caution. Do not feed this to a lion. Do you like dinosaur toys, lions? I don't know. That's kind of weird. I've never noticed that before. If you know what that is, leave a message. I'd like to know. So, all right. Let's take a look at the figure itself. Um, nice little front view of the guy. He's got a great Autobot logo uh, painted on the front there. Looking really, really darn cool with the white background. Um, the head sculpt is amazing. I love the scales on this guy, the horns, the detail in the horns. Uh, this paint scheme is really nice. I do like it. It's kind of an olive greenish silvery color. Um, and, of course, it's got the uh, kind of reddish brown uh, paint going on there, and there's even some wash. It's, you can kind of see it there in the cracks of the scale. It's kind of washed in there, which is really, really darn nice. Um, his back side has got kind of a gold paint down the spine, and of course that pattern kind of continues down through his tail, which is really, really cool. Nothing on the back of the frill, which is kind of unfortunate, but we have these nice paint apps up on the front part of the frill. He's got the little pupil down there. He does have a little purple tongue in there, which is really, really kind of cool. Kind of a goldish paint app on the beak of the dinosaur. Um, and he's got some brownish red apps on his knees. All in all, I mean, it's a sturdy, it's a heavy and sturdy little dinosaur. I do, do like this. Um, I'm going to get a whole collection of them. I want to get a bunch of them and make a little herd. Uh, I don't know why, but I, I decided that's what I need to do. And I'm also going to do it with Striker, the uh, tri or, uh, Stegosaurus uh, that came out with, uh, about the same time. Well, it's got a little toe paint apps on there. Now, he does have uh, some uh, robot kibble inside here on the back of the legs, but you know what? That's not too terribly bad. I can deal with it. Um, and then uh, a little bit of, I believe that's his head right there. But all in all, when it's just sitting there, it is a fantastic... Triceratops. I mean, you can't go wrong. I mean, this is probably one of my favorite deluxe figures that's ever been produced, and I'm so glad that they've repainted it over and over because I just can't get tired of him. I love it to death. Now, I would love to see a G1 uh, color scheme on this guy uh, and Striker. It'd be a nice little two-pack to have uh, G1 slag and snarl paint jobs on these guys. I think that'd be really darn cool. So if anybody at Hasbro is watching this, you should do that because that would be awesome. Um, 
Yeah, so uh, let's get this guy into my favorite mode, his corpse mode, and uh, talk about that. All right, so here we have Triceradon in his corpse mode. I believe it's called a trap mode. Uh, but yeah, so the panel opens up and we get this gnarly view of some ribs and some meat. And I, the, I really like this paint job and the fact that I mean, that looks like muscle meat. Uh, that dark kind of purple and we got the nice paint apps in there. It just, it just looks so awesome. Um, of course, the panel flips down uh, right here. It, it does it on both sides, so you can have this guy actually laying as a dead triceratops on either side. Um, and then his eyes, you push the horn up, and his eyes roll back into his head where he has no pupils, and his tongue sticks out a little bit farther, which is really, really, really cool. Uh, the other thing is you pull the tail out just a little bit, and again, you get the kind of veiny, fleshy... Uh, muscle uh, piece right there. They just nasty, gnarly looking. Absolutely love this. Uh, again, they call this a trap mode, I believe, in the Japanese version. The U.S. Uh, instructions on any of this this version of this figure I've ever seen has never made mention of this. I just find it hilarious that a Transformer has a corpse mode. And I don't know, maybe that's why I really like this guy. Uh, but that's really darn cool. It is unique, and I don't think any other figure in the line has that. So, uh, very cool stuff. So let's get this guy in the robot mode and see how he looks. All right, so here we have Triceradon in his robot mode. And it's not a bad transformation. It's a pretty fun transformation. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on, and he is very, very compact. Uh, before we actually look at the robot, I kind of want to look at his little weapon here, uh, which is his tail, essentially. And there are missile pieces that actually store up underneath his arm right there. Um, if you look underneath here, you can see where it just kind of slides in. And that's kind of cool for weapon storage. And he does come with two of them. His um, gun, uh, the little uh, handle piece here, sits into his hand. And it really doesn't sit all that well. You kind of got to force it in. Uh, but you push the button, or you push down on the uh, weapon, and it shoots the missile off, uh, which is kind of cool. Now, they do have a really nice Autobot logo painted over the crystal, but if you look just right, and you can barely see it back there, um, it still has the Maximal logo there. Uh, so the, all they did was paint uh, over that, and there are a lot of repainted Beast Wars figures that are like that. I thought that was kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, so there's his gun piece. Now, as far as the robot himself, the paint job is actually very nice. This is the first time I've seen this guy in this color scheme, and I do like it. Uh, kind of a dark grayish uh, robot color. I like the white panels. Um, with the, the red belt kind of going across there and the the yellow painted uh, badge looking really, really nice. Of course, like a lot of other Beast Wars figures, his uh, animal head is one of his arms. And then he's got a little arm back there. And they got these weird antenna gun things. I'm not really sure what those are for. Um, but yeah, they, so they just kind of sit there. And of course, he's got this big, massive uh, arm pad, kind of shoulder pad going on there. Um, kind of interesting, and his feet pop out under his other feet, so it kind of looks like he's walking on stilts. Now, the figure actually stands really, really well, um, looks really nice, and he's kind of got this rhino thing going on with the, the helmet, um, kind of strange. I don't know if it's supposed to be like a knight where it drops down. Uh, I'm not really sure, but I do like the purple with the yellow eyes. I think that looks really, really nice. Uh, he's got a lot of dino kibble on the back, and it just really, really makes this guy... All, I mean, he's got the posability, but there's so much compacted on him, he really doesn't do much more than just stand right there. Uh, he does have ball socket joints um, on his shoulder here. Uh, his elbow does move here. This piece moves as well as a joint up here, and there's a ball joint down at his elbow there. His chest piece does swing back and forth. He has ball joints at his hips, his knees do move, and the ankles do move at the bottom. But again, the problem is this head, this uh, kind of shoulder piece, and all this dino kibble on the back really doesn't do much for posability. Uh, so he just really kind of stands there. But that's okay because, well, quite frankly, 
Um, he's not going to be in robot mode in my collection. He's going to be in the really cool dinosaur mode with all the other paint uh, apps uh, that they have of him out there. So uh, that's him, Triceridon, the Transformers Universe paint scheme. Thanks for watching, guys. Look for more videos in the future. And as I collect more of them, well, I will compare the paint schemes. So, again, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great weekend, and uh, keep watching for more videos in the future.